Hey guys, Motor Car Not here, and today we're talking about misfires. And I'm sure either you're a car guy, a little mechanic, or whatever, you heard that term misfire before. And what exactly is a misfire? Well, I'm going to take you through a couple of, um, and this applies to all automotive, all gasoline, diesel engines. Um, and we're going to take a what a, what a misfire is, and you know, a lot of times it's not so easy to diagnose it. Sometimes it is. And we're just gonna uh, go through um, as much as we can today, try to explain it, you give you a little bit more insight so you can probably diagnose your own car because chances are over the lifetime of your car, the number one problem with automotive engines, the uh, combustion engines, is misfiring. And misfiring is basically like anything else, uh, you know, misdiagnosis, miss this, miss that. It's instead of firing the proper way, so the engine runs smooth, there's a miss, there's a skip. And in, in return, what I did with this car, I made this car misfire, so you're gonna see the engine shake in a minute, and it shakes. Sometimes it can shake every now and then, it'll shake like that, or shake like this constantly, that's a dead miss, meaning that one cylinder or many cylinders are misfiring constantly. And when that happens, when there's a constant shake, you're gonna probably get a check engine light that blinks. And if you have, uh, a check engine light that's blinking and the engine shaking you should shut the car off immediately and get it towed to a shop because what it's going to do it's going to damage the catalytic converters which is even more money and it's just going to cost you a lot more money um, most of the times a miss will set an engine uh, engine light but it won't blink so that means like the miss will be like every now and then and you know once a couple of times a second like that and what can cause a miss is well, a lot of things. Now, let's. there's all different types of miss. There's a constant miss. There's a, an occasional miss. There's a miss on one cylinder. There's a miss on multiple cylinders. And usually the codes are P0 starting with 300. P0 300 means a multiple misfire. That means that the computer can't tell which cylinder is doing it because too many of them are doing it. And then you'll get a P0, depending on, let's say you have a four cylinder, you'll get a P0301, which means the number one cylinder. P0302, which means two all the way up to four. You have a six cylinder, you can get a P0306, uh, P0308 for eight cylinders, or P012 uh, for a 12 cylinder motor, it doesn't really matter. All you have to worry about is the P0300, is a multiple misfire and P03123 or whatever is an individual uh, misfire which is easier to diagnose. So let's assume you have a misfire, engine shaking. A lot of times it could be other things, but most of the times anything electrical, fuel, compression, vacuum is going to affect the way the engine runs because the engine needs it needs air. It needs fuel, it needs spark, and it needs compression to make, ignite that fuel to give power that sh shoots down the piston and brings it back up and vice versa, and that's what keeps the engine going, in layman's terms. So, let's say you have a P0303, all right, on a four cylinder, six cylinder, eight cylinder, doesn't matter. We know that's the third cylinder. So what you're gonna have to look for is where the third cylinder is on your car. On a four cylinder, it's easy, usually the front where the timing belt, the timing chain is, that's number one. So number two, number three. On V6s and V8s and V12s, V10s, um, the firing order could be all different. So you have to find out uh, where that number, let's say the number three cylinder is. Now, let's say you got, like I just told you, a P0303. That's the third cylinder. So now, most of the times it could be a spark plug, most, or it could be a spark plug wire. Or if your car doesn't have wires, it could be the coil that goes on top of number three, it could be bad. It could be the wiring to the coil. Um, it could be fuel related, like the, now, now, if it's a P0303, it's not gonna be, let's say, like a fuel pump or fuel pressure problem because it's only one cylinder. If it was a P0300, which is a multiple misfire, those, like I said, are harder to diagnose. That could be a fuel pump because it's affecting all. 
But if you only have a misfire affecting one cylinder, it can't be a fuel pressure problem because the other cylinders are fine. So what could it be? It could be the fuel injector for that cylinder, okay, that's clogged. It could be, like I said before, a spark plug. It could be ignition coil, ignition wire. It could be... Um, it could be a vacuum leak if it was just, let's say if it was on the intake manifold and they're separate and you have one on number three, yes, if, the, if, the, if that is on just on number three and not the whole engine, yes, then it can leak and give you a vacuum uh, leak and give you a misfire on that number three cylinder. Uh, also, it could be cylinder compression. The compression, uh, it could be a, a valve that's stuck, a valve that's a little bit burnt, a valve that's not seating properly, that'll give you, that's a mechanical problem, that's a mechanical misfire, okay? So let's say, um, and basically those are the ways to do it. Basically, to not have, to not have uh, a misfire, you have to have proper spark, you have to have proper fuel, all right, and you have to have proper compression and you have to have proper air, air coming into the engine. And again, the air coming into the engine on a, on a pinpointed, like a, a certain cylinder, won't be as, as bad as if it was a multiple misfire. Now, a multiple misfire can happen for a lot. It could be a bad fuel pump. It could be a, a computer problem. Even with a single misfire, it could be a computer problem uh, not igniting that cylinder, but they're rare. Computers, you know, they go, but they don't, you know, it's very rare. That's usually the last part of the diagnostics. I'm gonna start this car, okay, before I go there, so multiple misfire P0300 affects all cylinders. So you have to think, okay, what can affect all cylinders? Well, a big major vacuum leak, all right? Um, let's say you have a mass airflow sensor that's sensing the air coming in and it's defective. That's gonna affect all cylinders because the computer doesn't know what's going on. It's not gonna only affect one, it's gonna affect all. A low fuel pressure or bad fuel pump is going to affect all. Like I just said, a major vacuum leak is going to affect all. And usually it's not going to be low compression because low compression is not going to just suddenly fail on all cylinders. Now, sometimes you've got to use a little common sense, you know, but sometimes it's not common sense. Sometimes you don't know. You just don't know. All right. Um, fuel, uh, a vacuum leak, or um, ignition coil. Now, let's say on this car, it has, it, not when you have single. If you have single, it's not gonna be the ignition coil, because like I said, all of them are not gonna go bad. But you see this one has a coil pack, and the pack or the wiring could be bad and giving you the multiple misfire. And depending on the uh, year making model, you can imagine how many scenarios it can be. That's why there's troubleshooting guides on each, on each vehicle to help the technician you know, uh, conclude what the problem is. So I'm gonna start this up and show you what the shake looks like, or misfire. Okay, now I just started, I have the, a bottle on here so you can see the shake easier. Let's uh, hold the camera steady. Now, a little bit of a normal shake is fine, but you see, every now and then, it's gonna judder. I mean, it's not that bad. This is not a constant misfire. It's not constantly going like that. It's going every now and then, it's going like this. Yeah. There, a little bit. And most people probably won't pick this up. I mean, I can I can make like nine out of 10 people drive this car right now and they, they, won't, they won't think anything's wrong with it. But you know your car, you'll know when it's misfiring, especially if the, if the check engine light comes on. All right? So on this particular, um, with this particular problem, what I did is I made one of the uh, spark plug wires come out a little bit so it doesn't really catch, it doesn't really fire like it's supposed to, just to show you the miss. All right, let me shut it off. So, when the first time when you um, notice, know that you have a, ch uh, a check engine light on and you know it's a misfire, and let's say, like I said, it's a P0 dedicated cylinder, like a P0301, let's say, 
Now, the first thing you would check, it all depends on the year, make, and model. I mean, this one has spark plug wires, some of them, like I said, they don't have it, they have coils. All right, you have to check. The easiest thing to first check if you're doing this uh, by yourself and you don't have that many tools is to check the spark plugs. You always start with the easiest things first. People think, they go right to the computer, think, oh, it's the computer, it's gotta be the worst thing. No, like I said, a computer rarely ever fails on vehicles, very, unless the thing was in, underwater. All right, you check the spark plugs. Uh, what are you checking for? Well, you check, you, you know, well, it's hard to do with a coil um, plug. You can't really check for spark, but you can. But like I said, every different, every car is different, so I can't show you. I can show you an example on this one where the number one cylinder spark plug wire is right here, this gray one. You would take it out, hold it with a glove, don't touch the car, and you would see if it sparks. If it sparks, at least you know, okay, there's the coil's good up until that, that area. You don't know about the spark plug, because the spark plug, you would have to put the spark plug in the boot and ground the tip of the spark plug and check for spark or use a spark plug tester. Like I said, all cars are different. You would check for spark first. You got spark? Okay, then you check to make sure you have um, uh, fuel. And the fuel is a little bit more tricky. What you can do if you have a fuel injector on that side, what you can do is start the car up. You see, try to disconnect the fuel injector plug. If the car runs the same, you know, it's, it, the fuel injector is not spraying properly, that's probably the problem. If you take it out and the car runs even worse, then you know, okay, it's probably not the fuel injector. All right? Then after that, you would have to check... Um, um, cylinder compression, believe it or not. All right, you have to make sure you have the proper cylinder compression for your vehicle. And let's say like over here, you have a little leak on the vacuum side, I mean on, on the intake side, there could be a little bit of vacuum leak. It could, if it's just right near the number one cylinder, whichever cylinder was misfiring, like I said before, it could cause a vacuum leak. It doesn't have to be a P0300 multiple misfire. Okay, so those are basically uh, some of the ways, like I said, there's so many. I'm going to make videos on each individual car that I got. I did them on Hondas, I did them on the um, Acura, I did it on the Toyota, I did it on the VW. Uh, you want to check those videos out. Uh, and now let's say if it's a dead misfire. Uh, we're getting back, I wanted to get back to the dead misfire. What does that mean? That means that, let's say it could be a dead misfire. Um, one cylinder, that means that, let's say, like, the plug was smashed and it's not even not firing at all. That cylinder is going to constantly shake, and it's going to usually shake more because the cylinder is not firing. All it's doing, and if the fuel injector is working, it's dumping raw fuel into the um, intake, and that's not good because it'll come out the exhaust and it, uh, make the catalytic converters get too hot, and it can mess them up, mess up your O2 sensors, too. So um, usually what can cause a dead misfire is... No spark, no fuel in that engine, uh, in that side, a burnt valve, no compression or extremely low compression, or a serious vacuum leak. Let's say, like, the gasket was missing on that particular cylinder. That can give you a dead, mis dead misfire. I have a Honda video showing you that the engine, you start, as soon as you start it up, it shakes like this, like crazy. It's not every now and then, it's not missing like that. All right? So I hope that can clear it up for you guys. Maybe it can help you out. If you have any questions pertaining to this video, I can probably help you out. Leave them below. I answer all my questions, try to help everybody out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy.